good morning everybody hope you're doing well this morning and are uh, interested in looking further into this very short but interesting book of Jude it's been of a challenge for me you know when I choose to go through sections of scripture because you know scripture is scripture and some of it is positive and some of it is negative and and Jude is spends the bulk uh, talking about a negative situation that we always try to turn to the positive and understanding well, you know, the negative example, which means, okay, there's a positive thing that we should be doing. And I've tried to emphasize that also. So throughout this whole book, there Jude has been uh, referring to a group of men that have come into the Lord's congregations and have caused trouble. They've caused trouble by teaching, believing and teaching things that are not true about the Lord Jesus Christ himself, about lifestyle how we live, and uh, whether or not, you know, we should uh, be worried about living a lustful, sinful lifestyle or not. Um, and so th these things are, are very important, and, and uh, Jude has been warning um, the, the Christians in the Lord's churches at this time to be on the lookout and to watch. So today we're going to look at verses 12 through 16, 12 through 16, and then once again, we're given just a, a, a litany of descriptions about who these people were and, and who, who they really are, what they re are really doing. They appear to be one thing, but this is who they really are. So let's look at starting of uh, Jude and verse 12. He, in referring to these people, he says, these are, and I'm, I'm reading today from the Amplified Bible because it does... And this section does such a great job of just exploding it and showing us what it's really talking about. So it says, These are hidden reefs, elements of danger. That's important. Hidden reefs, elements of danger in your love feasts, where they boldly feast sumptuously, carousing together in your midst without scruples, providing for themselves alone. They are clouds without water, swept along by the winds, trees without fruit at the late summer gathering time, twice or doubly dead, lifeless and plucked up by the roots. Wild waves of the sea, flinging up the foam of their own shame and disgrace. Man, what a description. Wandering stars for whom the gloom of eternal darkness has been reserved forever. It was one of these people, moreover, or it was of these people, moreover, that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Behold, the Lord comes with his myriads of holy ones, ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the Im impious holy ones of all their ungodly deeds which have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe abusive jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are in, in inveterate murmurs grumblers who complain of their lot in life going after their own desires, controlled by their passions. Their talk is boastful, boastful and arrogant, and they claim to admire men's persons and pay people flattering compliments to gain advantage. Wow. <laughs> Do you, it's hard even to wrap your head around the mental images that Jude has shared with his readers here and you and I today about what these people are really, really like. So let's go back and just kind of maybe look at just briefly each one of the things that he talks about or that the, the main impact. And the first one is this hidden reefs. You know, old King James is spots, but it's really kind of like the idea of, you know, a reef that's underwater. You can't see it and you're going along the water and then all of a sudden you hit the reef and, you know, if you're in a boat, you, you can knock a hole in the boat and you can uh, eventually sink. So they're hidden dangers. And these people represent a hidden danger. 
How is that? Because they may look, uh, you know, outward appearance to be, hey, just another brother or sister in Christ. But underneath, there's great, great danger because of what they really believe and what they're really teaching as, as, they, as you get close to them. Uh, he talks about them being like, uh, you know, trees with no fruit and stuff like that. They, they have a, a, a good, once again, a good outward appearance, but their fruit is useless. Their fruit is not there. It's just simply not real fruit that, that a tree should give forth at harvest time. They have an outward appearance of truthfulness, but within there is no truth within them. No real fruit. Uh, and, and then they're always steering up controversy. Man, think about that. So which verse was it? Um, in verse 15, the, they talk about the ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe, abusive, jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, they're always stirring up controversy. You know, if you uh, surf around on YouTube or any other, you know, media channels like that, even within Christian, you know, subject matter, I personally have run across people that, you know, I'll, I'll click on their stuff, something interests me, and I'll click on it and see what they have to say. And then look at others, other of their postings. And it's almost 100% invariably they're attacking somebody else. They're stirring up controversy. They might even be right sometimes. Sometimes they're wrong. You got to be careful with somebody who's, it's seemingly, their only purpose is to stir up controversy. Instead of, you know, uh, concentrating on the, on the positives of what the Lord wants us to believe, teach, and do. So anyway, all right. Um, then, he's, then he ends up talking about, hey, their day's coming. Judgment. Judgment is coming. We say, well, when are these people going to be judged? You know, as individuals, they very well may be judged by God during their lifetime. They may not, but there is an overall judgment coming. When the Lord comes back, his literal second coming, just as he's, before he sets up his millennial kingdom on earth, there will be judgments. And those judgments will be without, at that time, mercy because of what people have already done. Uh, the Bible talks about this in different ways. It describes wolves in sheep's clothing and the wolves will be found out. It describes wheat and tares and the tares will be removed. Uh, it, it does it, you know, the, 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 the godly nations and the ungodly nations, whatever. Uh, it does this in different ways. And if you want to know, you know, what, what kinds of issues are at stake here and what's going on, I would encourage you to go to three sections in, in the New Testament and, and you'll begin to see, look at Matthew chapter 7 in its true context of false teachers. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 and find out the first three verses, what's going to be going on in the world when the Lord comes back. And 2 Timothy chapter 4, the first four verses, and look at that. And you will see that all the things that scriptures talk about involves people believing and teaching the wrong things. Jude is about these guys that were believing and teaching the wrong things. They were teaching, go out and live a sinful life. There's no worries because God covers you. And then they were teaching against the actual lordship of Jesus Christ himself. That, you know, you, you don't even really need to worry about his lordship. And remember, lordship of Christ comes after we're saved. We believe first. And then, the, then Jesus Christ should become our Lord and Master of our lives. And so it makes a big, big difference what we decide to do with this new life that we've been given by Jesus Christ when we believe in him for eternal life. So think about these things. Think about 
how important they were to Jew then and how important they should be to us. We need to be emphasizing the, the truth of Jesus Christ, the, how people are saved, telling people to believe in Jesus Christ for everlasting life in order to be saved, and then share with them afterwards how that we are to follow him in true dedication. A, be a true follower of Jesus Christ and submit to his lordship, his right that he has to determine what is right and wrong for our lives and what is right and wrong for everyone and to submit to that right and wrong, sometimes even when it doesn't feel right to us as an individual. The world is full of people that are in that dilemma right now. So anyway, God bless you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.